Hey Will Zalatoris, Tom Segudo here. And I'm a golf instructor who teaches a body-friendly way to swing the club. And I was really sad to see that this week you're withdrawing from the Masters due to lower back injury. And you just came back after four months, so I know this has got to be really frustrating for you. No pimento cheese sandwiches, no peach ice cream sandwiches, no playing Augusta National. It's got to be very frustrating. And there is a solution to this. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways you can eliminate your back pain forever, start playing body-friendly golf the rest of your life, you'll still hit it just as far, you'll still play great golf, you'll still be on tour dominating the field. But you can't dominate the field when you're stuck with lower back injuries. Okay, Will, let's get started with your setup. This is the first thing that's causing a lot of back pain. It's this arch in your lower back. You're sticking your butt out. It's a very common golf instructing term nowadays. Stick your butt out, stick your butt out. What this is doing right off the bat is restricting your body's ability to rotate. See, you can create effortless power in the golf swing. You don't have to think about restriction to create power. You can just turn your hips to create power. But in this case, you're locking your lower back. So this does a couple of things. One, it places a ton of stress on your back immediately at setup. Locking my back in that position, I can feel my lower back tightening up. The second thing is, as you keep that arch in your lower back to the top of the backswing, this is restricting your body's ability to rotate. So it's restricting hip turn. Another thing you're seeing right here is your flexed right knee. You're arching your lower back with a flexed right knee. Those are two areas where you're getting a lot of resistance on your body. So you're preventing your body from rotating. That's a recipe for back pain. I used to be a golfer who would arch my back and keep my right leg flexed. I had back pain at 18. There was no way I could continue on playing golf with this type of situation. So the flexing of the right leg, also restricting hip turn. So you've got this giant resistance creating in this whole area, which ends up placing stress on the lower back here. And if you keep playing golf and you're hitting tons of balls a day, which I'm sure you are, you imagine the wear and tear that's doing to your body. It's not very comfortable. You'd be lucky to make it past 30 if you keep playing like this. So what you need to do instead of arching this back, you need to create a gentle rounding of your back from setup. So you want the back to do this. Instead of this arch all the way up like that, and then rounding, it's kind of like an S posture. Eliminate the S posture and replace it with a gentle rounding as you are naturally standing towards a golf ball. That would automatically release the tension on your lower back at setup and then what you do is as you're starting your golf swing, instead of keeping that leg flexed, like you're doing right here, there's barely any movement of that right leg. You can see how flexed that is. Instead of keeping that flexed, you're going to allow that leg to straighten. So when you straighten that leg, your hips turn more. Your hips turn more, they create more power, but you don't feel it on your body. It feels really effortless. It feels like you're swinging in a hot tub. Taking the tension off your body. You're storing power in the hips, and the more you can turn those hips, the more power you can potentially create. The next thing we're gonna look at here, Will, is your top of backswing position. So you've got that arch in your lower back, you've got the flexed right leg. The right leg is barely moving from its flex position. Keeping that arch, keeping that leg flexed are adding more tension as you turn to the top of your backswing. So you're creating more stress on your lower body, and this is shredding up your lower back over time, especially when you're hitting thousands of balls and you're practicing all the time. Then we have another problem that happens because of the flexing of your leg and the arching of your back. Your spine takes on this gentle upward curve like this. So you can see that curvature placing more stress here on the lower back. Your right leg has barely changed its flex, so it's still staying rigid in that position. The problem with that leg staying flexed and this arching your back is it causes your spine to level. It causes your shoulders to turn more level to the ground. That's a level shoulder there. Here's the angle of your hips. Those two are fighting against each other. And that's creating that little curve that I was drawing here. There's your spine. That's gonna hurt your back, tension on your back. But it'd be easier for you to get the hips turning, eliminate that knee flex, and get the knee straightening. That way you can get your lead shoulder turning more down towards the ball. Your hips and knees are working together. And when they're working together, they're allowed to turn. So you'll be taking that stress off your lower back. Another thing you need to know about keeping that knee flexed is it causes you to lift your arms higher to the top of the backswing. 
This could cause some problems for you in the downswing, as we're going to see right now. So moving into your downswing, hit the ball solid, you're going to have to get the arms and hands to go lower and then to the ball on a path like this. That action requires you to drop the club, but there's another thing that's going on here. You're going to aggressively fire your hips and you're going to get your shoulders on a very steep angle to the ground. So we see the hips firing, turning against that really stiff lower back. And then as you get into impact, you generate a ton of this spine tilt and shoulder tilt to the ground. That's a very steep angle of those shoulders to the ground. And just looking at this makes my back hurt. I've tried to recreate this position in person and it placed a ton of stress on my lower back too. Actually, I can't do it for more than a few seconds. So looking at your back in this position, if you're having pain right here, it's pretty obvious at this point. Look at that angle. I wouldn't say it's a 90 degree angle, but it's uncomfortable. This is outside of your body's normal range of motion. Your body shouldn't be getting to this position, especially when you're swinging a club 100 plus miles an hour. Imagine the stress that you're repeatedly doing to your body. That's painful. So instead of having to drop the club here and then rotate your hips hard, you can replace that with getting the hands a little lower at the top and then you don't have to drop the club. You can actually hit the ball without turning your hips so soon. You can delay the hip turn and that way you can get an impact with a lot less stress on your lower back. So you're firing your hips against a fixed back, fixed lower back with a flexed right leg. You're dropping the club. You're getting your spine into this ridiculously steep angle. It's no wonder you're not able to play golf and it's gotta be so frustrating. And this stuff drives me nuts too as an instructor because I'm seeing a lot of people teach this sort of thing. That looks uncomfortable. And all this resistance and tension. You could swing without that feeling. You could swing in an effortless way that doesn't hurt your body. Okay, Will, so now you know why your lower back is taking on so much stress. It's because you're resisting your body throughout the whole golf swing and your body is going outside of its normal range of motion. So you're constantly placing stress on your lower back in the setup, in the backswing to the downswing. Now we're gonna look at how to fix that problem. And I've got Grant Waite's swing here on the left. He was a PGA Tour player. Tiger Woods described him as having the best golf swing ever, best looking golf swing. Let's take a look at what you can do to eliminate back pain right now and see some immediate improvement you might be able to get back out and start playing Augusta right now. The first thing I'm going to recommend is eliminating this uncomfortable arch in your lower back. And you're no longer gonna keep it locked throughout the entire golf swing. You're going to change that in favor of this gentle rounding from the lower back to the top of your neck right here. That's a natural position. Your body's designed to do that. Whereas you're in a very unnatural position right from setup, locking that lower back in place. The next thing we'll look at is the backswing. We need to see a change in knee flex. The player on the left is going to get his hips turning. So watch as he swings to the top. As his hips turn, which feels effortless on your lower back, by the way, you'll see the right knee straightening. So there's a big change of knee flex here. This right knee straightening allows the hips to turn more. It allows you to keep your body's tilt towards the ball, which is key for good contact and it gives you more power because the hips are turning more. Another benefit to this is that it gets the hands a little bit lower at the top of the backswing. So you see Grant's lead arm on his shoulder line here. That means Grant can just swing the club on a much more direct line back to the ball. There is no need to dramatically drop the club and then go to the ball. That's rather inefficient. As you swing to the top, you're going to keep your right knee flex. There's virtually zero change in that right knee flex. So you see the problems of almost no change in knee flex places a ton of resistance on your hips and your lower back. That causes you to get your arms much higher at the top of the back swing, requiring you to drop the club and then hit it. And that's why you're working on turning your hips so much and dropping that club and this shredding up your back. But another thing that's going on here is that your shoulders versus your hips Shoulders are more level, your hips are tilted slightly. So from your hips to the top of your shoulders, there's that arch in your back. So you're keeping that arch. 
that's placing a ton of stress on your lower back as well. To eliminate that, simply do what Grant's doing on the left. Start straightening your right leg. Allow those arms to get a little bit lower at the top of the backswing in line with your shoulder line. It's also going to improve your consistency too. You don't have to time your swing so much with that dropping of the club and turning of the hips. The hips will work more naturally from the position of Grant on the left. Just let them turn on their own. Don't fight your body. That's the whole point here. Just don't fight your body, work with it. Then from this position, Grant is going to get into impact, keeping his relationship to the ball. So a gentle rounding of his spine. So you'll see this much more comfortable looking position. Not so much of that dramatic spine tilt that we're seeing here. Ouch. And look at the steepness of your shoulders. That's placing a ton of stress here on your lower back too. You don't need to turn your hips so early to hit the ball far. You can actually slow down your hips. Look at your right foot here. It's off the ground entirely at impact nearly. Now Grant's still got his foot on the ground. Why? He's accessing a concept of power called hip breaking. And you can look at Rory McIlroy even. Players are slowing down their hips, coming into impact, and then firing them later. This allows you to transfer more speed to the club with less effort. And so Grant here, he keeps his body in a very natural position throughout the entire golf swing. But you're fighting yourself with this really steep shoulder angle and all the way into the follow through. Now you're bending your spine back even more. It's placing more stress on the lower back. So I'm going to recommend three changes for you. You'll see an immediate relief with the first two. First one, gently round your back. Eliminate the arch. Eliminate that. Ouch. You should just call arch ouch. Second thing, straighten the right leg. So your knee flex should change from this position to not here, but rather somewhere around this yellow line. See that same change of knee flex that Grant was experiencing. So think about straightening your right leg. Those two things will make your back feel like a dream, like a cloud. I don't want to make any big changes with you right now, but you know, start with those two. If you wanted to move forward, I would work on lowering the height of your arms at the top of the backswing. So we go from this position here with the arms above the shoulder line and this arching of your back all the way down to here. We go from that to instead getting your shoulders and hips to work together because they're best friends so that you don't have that awkward arch. Your spine is just tilted towards the ball without that awkwardness of without this difference between your hips and your shoulders, the more tilted hips and the level shoulders. So we would lower the hands somewhere in here where Grant is. And then after that, I would work on your downswing. So you get the club going more directly to the ball without having to fire your hips and do this whole drop the club thing with the steep shoulder turn. I would eliminate that. And a player that comes to mind, I haven't talked about, Natalie Golbus ruined her back because of this same thing. We're going to replace that with something a lot more natural. Body's designed to work this way. All right, Will, I appreciate your time. If you do see this video, this will save your back. You'll be back on tour. You'll be enjoying those pimento cheese sandwiches. You'll be enjoying those peach ice cream sandwiches. You'll be playing Augusta National again. You'll be dominating on the PGA Tour. Because golf is supposed to be fun. You can swing the club in a stress-free way without hurting your body. And that is what you can do right here. You'll hit it just as far, if not farther, and you'll feel like your back is on a cloud. It'll be like a dream the day you feel no stress on the lower back, which could happen right now if you do these changes. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and have a blessed Easter.